to news publishers now working with the AI companies Tech AI to quote a popular sports broadcaster for ESPN and now of his own radio show Dan Patrick you can't control them you can only hope to contain them that's where we are right now with news publishers and the total taking an L a total losers ever a total surrender flag so these big news corporations, these news publishers, they're now at the behest. They are now bowing at the knee. They're taking the knee and bowing to the tech companies because the tech companies have taken the wool over their eyes. Okay. So the likes of News Corps or Axel Springer and all these other big publications, they're all stepping in line. And taking the tech AI companies when it comes to Google, NVIDIA, Microsoft with OpenAI, Google with Gemini, they're all coming in and saying, well, you know, we can't beat what you're going to do now. You want to talk about a total takeover? It was one thing when you had the search results coming up for your publications on Google, Yahoo, or Bing. But I'll tell you what. The whining, bitching, moaning, complaining and pouting that these news publishers had to the point that they decided, well, we're not going to take this line down. We're also not going to do anything about it and do better work with our, our content. No, they don't want to do anything about their content. They want to do anything about making their content better or putting in more staffing or more resources. Okay. Or jumping on the digital bandwagon when it was time, when the internet came through and the news sources said, well, we're going to stick to our traditional guns. We're going to stick to our traditional media resources, right? People are still going to pick up a paper. People are still going to go and pick up a magazine, right? Oh, you thought, oh, digital subscription, we'll just put it out there. But, you know, it doesn't matter. It's the physical units. And then the physical units continue to go away. Subscriptions go down. Advertisers go away. So they've been going to tech at a lower cost. And now... All these publications, instead of getting subscriptions with ad-free content up on their websites, no, they're getting pop-ups all over the place and paywalls. So the news publishers have pissed off their user base, their readership. The readership's gone down. I mean, look, I even looked at the Palm Beach Post, New York Post, New York Daily News the other day. I was at a 7-Eleven. And yeah, it was on a Tuesday, but still, man, I had never seen the papers look so thin. The regular newspaper now, the Palm Beach Post, two dollars fifty cents. I think it's five dollars now for the same thing. Who do you expect to go and buy that? And then you're also like now desperate of trying to put out whatever you can. Like I, I can't get how many times I see like six months for a dollar for the Palm Beach Post. Yeah, they want to go and hook you in and get what they can. And remember when they started taking away the amount of news reporters that was out there, right? Oh, let's just put everything in Associated Press. All the place. Well, Associated Press has their own website. We don't need you anymore. Local News does a pretty good job of putting the news up on their websites. We don't need you anymore. And now, paywalls be damned. Now we're at the point where tech AI has come into play. So the Google search results, remember, this got escalated because of the fact that the news publishers in other markets, you know, they were trying to do it in America. We talked about it plenty of times here on this program. They were going to put together a publisher's code. They were going to get the government to intervene and force these tech companies to give them a piece of what they were getting for their advertising. That they had to mandatorily share their advertising revenue. They were going to be charged a fee so that these news publishers could collect the monies that they were losing from news publishing because these websites, oh, the, oh, so the gateway of Google giving you access, giving them access to your content, you know, like, I guess the news publishers don't realize that, you know what, you work on your SEO, your search engine optimization, 
and you create searchability throughout all your content, to be able to go to your website to access your content. But what do we do now? We see it in our Google, Apple search results, Yahoo search results, whatever. We're not accessing your articles right from your website. People are not just programmed to go right to your website and go looking. I can't tell you if I've ever done that. New York Times, Washington Post, you know, New York Post. I mean, the the industry rags they do. And at least they're smart to go and put their articles up there and be, and be noticed. Because they have no choice. I'm sorry, Billboard. I'm not going to go and pay, spend, what, a couple hundred dollars. You used to go and, you used to go and make people go and pay, remember, $30, $40 a month for your publications. For news and information that also got old as soon as you got it. That was also published a month in advance. We're now in the day and age where the search results make news so much faster to consume. And social media even more hyper fast. You don't have an answer for that. Look, I can go on X now. We don't have to call it Twitter anymore. We all know what it is. X.com. Now I can go to premium pages. I can see a story, a video, first of all, of a clip that will catch my attention. And I can read a full story now about the article. Why do I need you? And for some of these sites, you can get subscription content for a couple dollars a month. Just like that. Why do I need you? Why? You decided you're going to try to bully the tech companies and then he started working underneath the scenes of artificial intelligence which they've been working on machine learning for years and now we got AI and AI search there's no turning back now the news publishers put out the white flags uh oh we screwed up we're not going to be able to get out of this here now we're just going to be able to get what we can for now remember the inflation the economy the dwindling, eroding readership, circulation, advertising that they're all getting. Radio has the same thing going on too. And dare I say radio, if you ever realize there's going to be a point where the Spotify's and Apple app and the iTunes of the world, they perfect the idea of AI voiceovers. Just wait, man. Radio is going to be obsolete. I mean, radio is still free, but you're not going to get that much advertising over there either. It's all these mainstream establishment sources, your traditional linear avenues of consuming content. They're all going by the wayside. When everybody can get their information and news on the phone. And by the way, sometimes I can go ahead and go to a site and I can find it somewhere without a paywall. Because some of you will have already done it. You have that one person that actually paid the subscription so they can share it with everybody else. And what are you going to do about that? Nobody has an answer to that. No, nope. no, 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 no. So New York Times and Business Insider really have quite a bit they're going to say about this. There's quite a bit going on right now of the media being stuck in this right now. And I just looked around. I was talking about this a bit last week. And you know what? It's just gotten worse. Because now we had the stories about all these different news publishers buying in and making deals. By the way, advanced compensation. So that's just to keep them afloat. And they will be making nothing off the back end unless they negotiated it. But these tech AI AI companies, they got smart. They said, oh, we're going to keep your content up there. But now we can use it for our own purposes as an AI because you're selling it off to us. You're signing away your rights to publish independently because now Google and Meta and Microsoft with opening a uh, uh, chat GPT. Yeah, you're done. You're done. You will not come back from this. You will not come around through this and be able to survive what's happening here. It's over. Game over. So let's take some of the stories that are being talked about that right now. New York Times. A strong article. 
Google's AI search leaves publishers scrambling. So Google's overhauled their search engine. Publishers have tried to assess the danger to the brittle, brittle business models while calling for government intervention. But see, now here's the thing too. Everybody's kind of like, you know, fear mongering now. Oh, you're letting AI take over everything. Oh, no, no, it's got to be human input. As long as there's human input and human intervention to control what's being done with these machines so that they learn correctly. That's what you got to worry about. So the New York Times article starts off talking about Frank Pine searching Google for a link to a news article two months ago, encountering paragraphs generated by AI about the topic at the top of his results. To see what he wanted, he had to scroll past him. This Mr. Pine is the executive editor of Media News Group and Tribune Publishing. They own 68 daily newspapers across the country. Now the paragraphs scare him. Yeah, we've been seeing that for a while, where you can see AI in a search result before you even get to the articles. Because they've already pulled what's in the articles into the story. So why even click through? In May, Google announced the AI-generated summaries, which compile content news from news sites and blogs on the topic being searched, will be made available to everyone in the United States. And now this is making other, many publishing executives worried about the paragraphs posing a big danger to their brittle business model, sharply reducing the amount of traffic to their sites from Google. You should have played along. You should have played along and not play so hardball thinking you still mattered. Okay. You are leveraging from a point of weakness. Newspapers, magazines, blogs, you are negotiating from a position of weakness. You should have just played along. You're lucky that these tech companies are willing to throw you a bone, throw some breadcrumbs at you, because that's all you're getting off of this. They're giving you enough to keep you alive until you go away. See, the ultimate revenge where media deregulation and these corporations and then these vulture capital companies, right? The venture capital, private equity folks for taking away the jobs of real human input, taking away all those good jobs from people. You're throwing away the livelihood of the publication. It's a short-lived profit, and now you're going to suffer. And eventually, the tech AI companies will be able to do what radio did to itself when the corporations came, when the clear channels came in the world, right? Right. Yeah, you learn how to write, you learn how to publish, you learn how to report, and then it's gone. Like those jobs go away because then these tech AI companies, they're not news publishers. But they're gonna they're gonna do? They're gonna do what the radio they do in radio and television. Oh, you know, we'll learn we'll learn how to program, we'll learn how to write, we'll learn how to report. And then eventually, oh, now we don't need you guys anymore. You're out. You'll be used, abused thrown away. Mr. Pine says that it potentially chokes, quote, off the original creators of the content. But remember, this, you, you've already been choking off the original creators anyway because you've been sending them off. Tribune Publishing is nowhere, you know, not culpable of the fact that they also have been laying off staff. So the brittle business model was self-induced by these publishers. Let's just make that clear. Media executives said in interviews that Google had left them in a vexing position. They want their sites listed to Google search results, which for some outlets can generate more than half of their traffic. But doing that means Google can use their content and AI overuse, overview summaries. Yep. And let me tell you something. Now that they have offered Google Gemini as part of their Google One service, and now I can go and take articles. I can take whatever information that's got the Google search results and what's out there that has been scraped, that has been examined. And all I got to do now is give Google Gemini a question. You can do the same with ChatGPT if you got the current model, the paid model. Cranks out the story with current and accurate information. No need to go to these websites. No need for that traffic. No need to go through paywalls. No need for any of it. No answers for this. Nothing. Publishers could also try to protect their content from Google by forbidding its web crawler from sharing any content snippets from their sites. But then their links would show up without any description, making people less likely to click. Oh, see, the tech companies, they all thought this out. You're not going to win this war. The media is not going to win against tech. You're just not. You're going to fail. 
You're going to lose. So now they're giving you this position. You know? It's like public domain. It's like there's this big developer coming into town and all these Section 8 housing you know, projects and homeowners from way back, they're going to convince you to go and sell your house, your property, at what they think is a good price, slightly above average. But then you're going to give that up, and then the rest of the neighborhood is going to do the same thing. And then what happens? You get all these big brand new buildings, people in neighborhoods get kicked out, and then we get a full change. You know what I always hear, always hear about gentrification? That's how it works. Same thing here. It's like gentrification. Another alternative, refusing, refusing to be indexed by Google and not appearing on a search engine at all could be fatal to their business. No, you need Google. You need Microsoft for Bing. You need the search engines. You cannot survive by not being visible on the internet. And just hoping that people will go to your website. How are they going to do that? You're not going to advertise it to them on a billboard, on a bus, on a television, or on radio. No, you're not. No, you're not. You don't have the money. And this is why. They don't have to do anything to these news publishers. Google said its engine, search engine continued to send billions of visits to websites, providing value to publishers. The company also said it has not showcased its AI summaries when it was clear that users were looking for news on current events. Liz Reed, Google's vice president of search, said in an interview before the introduction of AI in overviews that there were hopeful signs for publishers doing testing. Quote, we do continue to see that people often do click on the links in AI overviews and explore. A website that appears in the AI overview actually gets more traffic than one with just a traditional blue link. Ms. Reed also said in a blog post that Google will limit AI overviews to a smaller set of search results after it produced some high-profile errors. But they will continue to improve the system. You know, it's still working itself out. Now, we're also getting losses from this. Of course, the, you know, losses have to happen, too. Right? For these corporations, they have to hold on for their livelihood. AI generated some reason the latest area of tension between tech companies and publishers. The use of articles from news sites has also set up a legal fight of other companies. Like OpenAI and Google have violated copyright law by taking the content without permission to build their AI models. So New York Times sued OpenAI and Microsoft in December, claiming copyright infringement of news content relating to the training and servicing of AI systems. Seven newspapers owned by Media News Group and Tribune Publishing, including Chicago Tribune, also put out a, a same lawsuit against the same companies. OpenAI and Microsoft are denied any wrongdoing. Are they going to win? Probably not. More than a year ago, Microsoft put generative AI at the heart of its search engine being. Google, afraid to mess with, with its cash cow, took a more cautious approach. But they now have an aggressive rollout for the AI feature at its annual developer conference, conference in mid-May. By the end of the year, more than a billion people will have access to the technology. Oh, boy. So what are some of these news publishers trying to do to go ahead and kind of, you know, stay with it? Try to hold on to themselves. Try to keep some dignity to themselves. They roll out, the, the rollout of, of what Google's doing here and what Microsoft's already done is they need to, they're underscoring the need to develop direct relationships with readers, including getting more people to sign up for digital subscriptions and visit their sites and apps directly and be less reliant on search engines. Oh. You know, it's funny. There used to be a lot of sites that, Again, I don't want to be political here, but you know, there was a time where, you know, we always hear about social media. They talk about disinformation and censorship. These news publishers are basically following the same traits that some of these publications that might have been censored and might have been tagged as misinformation or disinformation. They would do exactly what these publishers now are having to do because tech AI is taking over. Nicholas Thompson, chief executive of the Atlantic, he said his magazine will is investing more in all the areas where it had a direct relationship to readers, such as email newsletters. Oh, trust me. I know what's going on here. Like, you know, I remember hearing all the stories and watching where all these different sites were being censored or being, you know, pushed back because I'm not saying if it was right or wrong but because of the fact that the government can come on in or, or these social media sites could control whatever publications could go on and put information up, especially during COVID. Remember who we had that going on too. And what would these sites do? They would try to go ahead and encourage emails, newsletters, or, you know, go to a different site. Like here's the thing, YouTube, when they were censoring and pushing people off of their pages, 
we had to go to alternative sites. One of them is Rumble right now, and, you know, it's holding on. And, you know, people are able to go over there and do something with it. But that's not the complete answer. The thing is, is that, you know, for these publishers, Google and Microsoft and what they offer for their search engines are the lifeblood of people even recognizing and realizing that the New York Times or the Chicago Tribune are even alive. They're not buying your newspapers. They're not buying your magazines. We're not going to the newsstand anymore. The newsstands are done. And instead of working with tech AI, you've been fighting with it. And now you're failing. That's on these publishers right now. Greedy corporate publishers. Greedy corporate media. That's what you get. Listen, you know, that's what you want. That's what you're going to get. What are you going to do? Newspapers like the Washington Post and Texas Tribune have started a marketing startup called Subtext, helping companies connect with subscribers and audiences through text messaging. Yeah, so you got to make another site. Like I said, oh, so Google doesn't work? Oh, you're going to have to create, you know, Patreon, Subtext. You know, the choice. Subtext will have, you know, these in the New York Post, letting readers exchange text messages with sports reporters on staff as an exclusive subscriber benefit. Right. So now these news reporters, just trying to keep themselves together, they have to also go and work and engage with fans. Because remember, any premium service, you have to offer more to make it worth premium. Let's just put it like that. The dispute over copyright it took an unexpected turn with OpenAI scraping new sites to build ChatGPT started cutting deals with publishers. We've talked about that last week. The paid companies, including Associated Press, Atlantic and News Corp, which owns the Wall Street Journal, taxes their content. But Google, whose ad technology helps publishers make money, has not signed those kind of deals. They've long resisted calls to compensate media companies for their content, arguing that such payments would undermine the nature of the open web. Yeah, because when they did that, you know, then other countries like Australia or Canada, like Canada right now is doing the same thing. I'm going to get back to the story in a minute. Canada right now is trying to do the same thing right now, demanding 5% of revenue from Netflix, Spotify, and other streamers. They want to start collecting. And this is to help support local news and other content. So the CRTC, they're hoping to raise $200 million per year to support local news and other homegrown content. So large online streaming services now must pay 5% of their Canadian revenue to the government. You think they're going to stay around for that? You think they're going to stay around and let Canada take 5% of the revenue? Oh, they could pull out of there. They could just say, no, no, we're not going to stay around. The fees would apply to both video music streaming services. So, and the CRTC is already getting opposition from Amazon, Apple, Disney, Google, Netflix, Paramount, and Spotify. The new fees are scheduled to take effect in September and apply to online streaming services that make at least $25 million a year in Canada. Regulations exclude revenue from audiobooks, podcasts, video game services, and user-generated content. Well, are any of these companies going to decide to go ahead and just pull out of Canada? They could. They could. Canada thinks they could do that. Australia thought they could do that too. It's not going to work. They could try, but it's a mistake. It's a big mistake. Condé Nast's chief executive, Roger Lynch, they own New Yorker and The Vogue, quote, you cannot opt out of the future. This is the future. I'm not disputing whether it will happen or whether it should happen, only that it should happen on terms that will protect creators. But see, creators, you know, the creators are the ones you've been firing, Roger, okay? Condé Nast has done their own set of layoffs. A lot of writers, a lot of reporters, a lot of journalists, some of those that were also unionized. And you let them go. Don't talk to me about creators. Don't tell me about creators. Oh, protect creators. Yeah. You think you're creators? You might have been knowing how to publish and write something back in the day, but don't tell me that you're publishers now. Don't tell me that. You're lying to yourselves. And this is what they're going to do now. Of course, they're going to go whine to Congress. He said search remained the lifeblood and majority of traffic for publishers and suggested that the solution to their woes could come from Congress. He has, he has asked lawmakers in Washington to clarify that the use of content for training AI is not fair use under existing copyright law and requires a licensing fee. Oh, wait till see this. Go to the Supreme Court. All right. Look, the precedent is set. These news publishers, okay, 30 years ago, 
they didn't worry about this. They never had to worry about this with the internet. They think they're going to go and go to Congress and go, wah, and they think they're going to get Congress to go ahead and change laws to support them. You know, in my opinion, I don't think they can do that because I think the politicians, of course, are fat cats. They're, you know, they like lobbying money. And these news publishers don't have any money. They don't have lobbying money for these folks. But I'm sure the tech people do. I'm sure they already spend it right now. So you're probably not going to win that fight either. Unless you think the court's going to help you out and give you fair use. Mr. Thompson of the Atlantic, whose publication announced a deal with OpenAI, still wishes Google would pay publishers as well. Of course, you'd like them to pay. You want the bargaining code. You want that publisher's code. You're not going to get it. But the Atlantic wants to be part of Google's summaries as much as possible. Quote, we know traffic will go down as Google makes this transition, but I think that being part of the new product will help us minimize how much it goes down. And there's no answer for this. You know, Google and Microsoft with Gemini and OpenAI and ChatGPT, man, they're just taking over. We heard about it all last year. And then all it's a matter of time before people realize all oh, the media, you're screwed. Let's talk about Business Insider. They're talking about the fact that they now have OpenAI paying, paying publishers for big money for content. Could it be a lifeline or a blow up in their faces? Big money. But remember, it's advanced competition. It's up front. Let's make sure to clear that up. The deals look bad to some critics. A replay of desperate deals publishers have done with big tech. Publishers say their eyes are wide open this time. No, no. You're going to lose here again, too. You're just going to have to live with it. You don't know what you're doing. You're not prepared. You don't have an answer for this right here at all. And this Business Insider reporter, let me go ahead and give him credit here. Peter Kafka. He makes the point here, and you know what? He's not wrong. Let me let me just take this here and let him kind of slew it out. A story we've all heard of before. Media companies will once again find that they got a bad deal. They will regret their packs with a tech giant that doesn't care about their business at all. Let me read that one more time. The media companies will once again find they got a bad deal. They will regret their packs with a tech giant that doesn't care about their business at all. The argument is being made by a slew of Deals publishers have been making with OpenAI over the past few months. We talked about Vox Media, Axel Springer, that owns Business Insider, Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation, Barry Diller's Dot Dash Meredith, which owns People Magazine, among others, and Lorian Powell Jobs' Atlantic Media. OpenAI is going to open is going to offer them millions of dollars in cash over the course of the deal, typically three to five years, plus some credits to help them build and operate their own products with OpenAI software. The deals promise to feature their content along with links back to their kites in OpenAI's products. In exchange, OpenAI gets the rights to use essentially everything those companies have ever published. And part of a settlement for OpenAI's previous use of the publisher's content, which it used to build the models that power the software company. A license also in just new stuff that the publishers make so that OpenAI software like ChatGPT can provide answers to questions about things that are happening now. Yep, you're getting a commission. You're just... Meet your salespeople now. You failed at getting advertising. You fail at keeping your audience. You failed the people that you laid off. And now you're going to fail negotiating from a, a, a position of weakness with the tech giants. Jessica Lesson is a journalist who found and runs the information news site. She talked to The Atlantic last month and said this, quote, for as long as I've reported on internet companies, I have watched news leaders try to bend their businesses to the will of Apple, Google, Meta, and more. Chasing text distribution and cash, news firms strike deals to try to ride out the next digital wave. They make concessions to platforms that have to take all their audience and trust that great journalism attracts without ever having to do the complicated and expensive work of the journalism itself. And it never, ever works as planned. Whose fault is that? Jessica? You know, your sites don't have to be coming around here if the publishers knew what they were doing or they would have stuck to their guns and made the readers and the advertisers realize, you know what? We're still putting money in and resources in. We're investing in ourselves. So advertisers come and invest with us. Subscribers, please invest in us. You said you couldn't do that anymore. You wanted to go the route and just keep cutting and cutting and cutting to get your profits. 
threw a lot of good journalists away. Nah, not good. So the publishers will say they, the other deals they did a long time ago, the ones with the likes of Google and Apple, and most particularly Facebook, they've learned lessons from them. Oh, do you think you did? <clears throat> the deals that they had most crucially require publishers to change their business, create new formats, and make a particular kind of give video or story that would normally not would normally not make, or make more of them that they normally make. But the open AI deals publishers have emphasized are straightforward licensing deals for stuff they've already been making. Nothing bespoke. It doesn't change the way we operate them, right? And by the fo most common thing they also say you'll hear when you talk to publishers about these deals, there's something close to free money, free money for work that was going to get made regardless. Which means they say at the end of these deals, publishers won't have to regret investing in another defunct big tech project. Also, the critique in here is that the deals that publishers are getting are selling their stuff too early or for too little, and they won't know what the real market for this stuff is for a long time. Then there's a lawsuits from the likes of the New York Times. Why don't you see if, you know, the New York Times is going to is going to win their lawsuit, and they can also make sure that the copyright and the fair use policies will work in their favor. But they're not going to do that. That tells you a lot about these other companies. Sure, publishers tell me that this person writes these deals mean we can't sue OpenAI for taking our stuff. But what happens if the courts or lawmakers end up undercutting our ability to do that anyway? It's a crapshoot. We don't know when we're going to find out the results. And in the meantime, publishers argue they can go ahead and strike similar deals with other big tech companies that want to use their stuff for their own AI engines. Add all that up, and this might amount to real, real money right now because they're desperate. They're running out of time. They're running out of money. They're saying that this is the same thing where, you know, when the big TV networks and movie studios were selling their old titles to Netflix just to get in the streaming business. The logic, we already sold sell our old stuff, so this is just a new business partner. We won with a big checkbook. Let's sell them as much as we can. And then the media companies figured out too late that they were helping Netflix build a much better version of the business because they started doing their own content. Oh, uh-oh. Why watch a show when it airs on ABC when you can wait a little while and see it on Netflix whenever you want without any ads? Disney CEO Bob Iger put it, quote, we are basically selling nuclear weapons technology to a third world country. They're not using it against us. <laughs> That's a pretty good quote. I like that. Pretty smart there, Bob. And then she made those companies stop selling their content to Netflix and started trying to use their own shows and movies to build their own versions of Netflix. An effort that turned out to be expensive and likely to wait. Yeah, the streaming services that we have right now. See, the Netflix model is like what the tech giants are, right? So media gets screwed again. This big, this is where the media, like I said, the big corporate media establishment, they make a lot of dumb mistakes. They're trying to do things with technology they do not anything know about. And if they do, they're coming in too late and way too late to get into it. The other question they ask here about publishers is that what happens if consumers become used to getting answers from ChatGPT or other AI engines and stop bothering to visit the sites that generate the answers? Like the only thing you're going to be hoping for me is that the AI is going to cite the sources. You better hope that they do that. You better hope that the AI is going to cite your source, maybe even link to it, if you're lucky. Some publishers I've talked to believe that won't happen, that ChatGPT users will want to read their work because their work is original and useful, and ChatGPT won't replicate it in its entirety. Another publisher under anonymity says that what have you helped them become Netflix? They've taken our movies already. OpenAI and other AI companies have already crawled publishers' websites, ingested their content, and used it to train their models. The ship has sailed. The horse is at the barn. All that's left now is to accept that reality and try to make the best deal possible. And if that logic sounds less triumphant and grimly realistic, welcome to media in 2024. Yes. Not good days. So now what do you have left? All these news outlets now, all whining and complaining about the fact, oh, look what happened to us, right? Vanity Fair puts out, if Google kills news media, who will feed the AI beast? That's the other part I got to say. Oh, so if you kill off these news publications, who's going to take care of the work that we've been doing? Mm. They say that the Cliff Notes version of journalism will further dumb down public discourse and deliver a brutal blow to an already battered media business. Well, whose fault is that? You I mean, oh, tech giants. You know, you know, how dare you want to make money? 
How dare you be so smarter than us? Right? Nobody's figuring that out. They beat you to it. You don't have an answer. In the story here from Vanity Fair, over the past three decades, tech companies are, have systematically helped siphon off the advertising revenue that once supported robust journalism. Yeah, but also three decades ago, you still had people that were actually still, you know, paying writers to actually write stories in the newspapers that people were reading. Hmm? At the same time, the proliferation of free news content aggregated by tech giants like Google News have made it increasingly difficult for news outlets to attract and retain paying subscribers. As such, the publishing industry has been declining since the early 2000s, where well, the real tech companies were separated from the chaff of the dot-com bubble. And we already know, we've talked about all these different news publishers that are losing money hand over foot. When asking people in Silicon Valley if they worry about the new reality of tech sites summarizing everything and more jobs being lost in the news industry, they seem genuinely elated by the idea of something that will save them more time and not require them to click through to another site. A Silicon Valley investor and entrepreneur writes, quote, I think that whatever semblance of clicks the publishers were hanging on to this completely pushes them off over the cliff. And that's not tech's fault, but the fault of the publishers. Most quote-unquote news sites have already alienated readers with their obsessions to do with trying to create content in response to whatever Twitter is about, upset about the day. And so the few places that still do real journalism can keep trying to do real journalism and hope they'll get enough clicks to keep the lights on. For everyone else, they'll take a tweet and make an article out of it. Fuck them, they deserve to die. Somebody said, oh my goodness. It's true. How many times do you see a story that's based off a tweet? That doesn't work. That's Real lazy journalism. One of the big worries with the rise of these AI cliff notes, by the way, you're going to use the word cliff notes. That's an antiquated phrase here, Nick Bolton of Vanity Fair. You think you're going to like scare people off with that? No, cliff notes. Do you think we, we, do you think everyone wants to read your, you know, 3000 word stories? No, no. You can easily see how AI summarizations without human intervention can provide not just incorrect information, but sometimes dangerously incorrect results. Okay, and they try to use an example here. You know, oh, the, the Google gets stuff wrong. Ooh, hey, it's still a work in progress. So again, they talk about the fact that the news industry's response to the threat has been mixed because some of them are just buying in. Oh, we're just going to work with you. You know, that's it. We'll just give up. That's it. Surrender. So the question he asks is, let's just say Google and AI, OpenAI and Facebook succeed and we read summaries of the news rather than the real thing. Eventually those news outlets will go out of business. And then who's going to be left to create the content that they need to summarize? Or maybe it won't matter because by then we'll be so lazy and obsessed with shorter content that the AI will choose to summarize everything into a single word. Into a single word. Hold on, Nick. Hold on. You know what's going to happen? Yeah, they might not need people like you. Because you know what will probably happen? Maybe citizen journalists will actually get a chance to go ahead and put out stories and put them on social media. They'll be verified and fact-checked. And then the AI will take those stories. There's going to be stories that are still going to need to be covered locally in other places. There will still be reporters out there. It's your fault that you're not hiring them. And bringing them onto your fold to take care of the work for you. You just didn't consider that. Reason Magazine talks about now news publishers trying to sick the government on Google AI. Like I said, they think that's going to work now. It's not going to work. Mistake. The News Media Alliance, a major news industry trade group, wrote a letter to the Department of Justice and the Federal Trade Commission asking the agencies to use antitrust authority to stop Google's latest expansion of AI overviews. Now, what are the government going to say about this? May 28th, the news media allows, asked the government to take action against Google's use of AI. And they want the agencies to investigate what it calls Google's monopolistic misappropriation of publishers' content and to use federal antitrust law to stop Google's latest expansion of AI overuse. You know how many times Google's been set up for antitrust, right? How many times they've been sued for that? It's not going to work. And a story from Reason.com talks about that. It's always amazing to see how an industry so supportive of civil liberties that benefit them Freedom of the press can be so indifferent to freedom in other realms. Here we have a journalism industry trade group asking the federal government simply to shut down a tech tool that might make publishing less profitable. The news release from the News Media Alliance, quote, Google is 
starving publishers of traffic and creating conditions that encourage users to remain on its platform instead of clicking through to get the information directly from the original content creators. But publishers have no right to eyeballs, especially no right to have Google send the eyeballs their way. Many websites have gotten used to Google searches sending them a certain amount of traffic. It doesn't mean Google's obligated to continue sending them the same amount of traffic forever. And no amount of hand-wringing about Google AI citing or linking websites will change that. But Google's pivot to AI now is hastily making news media very hostile. And publishers demanding that search engines and social platforms pay them for the privilege of sharing news links, even though this arrangement benefits publications more than tech companies. News outlets from the U.S. to Australia and Canada have been trying to orchestrate what amounts to a link tax, which would charge these tech companies for linking to them. We've seen a constant stream of complaints from news media about the kind of articles that search engines and social platforms feature. They're too partisan, contain too much misinformation, all that kind of stuff. So rather than letting companies win out in the AI arms race, Google started integrating AI into its search engines. The important point is that Google did not ask the government to intervene to save the search engine model of your, it innovated. Right. Google and Meta and, and Microsoft have to, don't have to go that route. Position of strength, right? So DOJ's antitrust division and Jonathan Cantor, the news media alliance wants him to, uh, to mobilize. So at Stanford, a recent conference, Cantor asserted that the Justice Department has the authority to take action under the antitrust principle of monops- monopsony which occurs when a buyer in supply chain wills excessive power, leading to reduced prices and disincentivizing production. Disincentivizing production. Wow. He warned that without competition to adequately compensate creators, AI companies could exploit this power to an unprecedented extent with severe consequences. So you can take all the lawsuits you want. You can go after government intervention all you want. You're not going to win that either. You know? That's not going to help. So they'll get the help of AI, but again, we know it's going to get not well for them at all at the end of, of all this. There's other stories they could bring up that do the same thing here and talk about it. And there was a new report from the Reuters Institute that's trying to go ahead and push people all off the idea of AI, saying that people don't trust the news media to gener- use generative AI responsibly. That's not a good story. This is from the Neiman Lab that writes about this. In six countries, Argentina, Denmark, France, Japan, UK, and US, a study asked about the place of generative AI in their news. So across, they they, they said the journalists at the moment are always or sometimes using generative AI within some human oversight. And that two-thirds of respondents say they expect generative AI will have a very or somewhat large impact on the news media industry. And the outlook is also bleak in the study when it comes to perceptions of whether generative AI will make the news media better or worse. That news and journalism are not going to be in a, in a positive light. That's the part of learning about that too. Australia, who, who has been trying to go after the linking tax that the, the Reason Magazine talked about, or the, the code that they've been trying to put together, the Australian boss of News Corp has been urging the Prime Minister to lobby the U.S. for the breakup of tech giants, defending the company's commercial deals with a major AI firm amid preparations for further redundancies. Michael Miller, the Australian Prime Minister, he referred to tech platforms as unavoidable trading partners, rebuked the likes of Facebook, X, and TikTok for refusing to subscribe to Australian rules or values, pushing for the government to implement legislation to curb the platforms and force them to attain a social license to operate locally. Yeah, it's not going to work either. Keep trying to do all this stuff to them. They're not going to pay attention. Oh, excuse me. That's uh, Michael Miller. I'm not sure where he's with. Oh, he's with uh, News Corp Australia. Excuse me. The idea is that to the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, asked the Australian Prime BM, should lobby for the breakup of these companies due to the national security threats. And they spoke to the National Press Club this past week. In March, we talked about how Facebook and Meta, they were trying to negotiate, renegotiate new commercial deals with Australian publishers, and then Meta just walked away from the negotiations because they were asking for too much. So they didn't want to play with this anymore. The deal that this court has right now would be worth... $250 million. And the company already has made a number of senior editors and managers redundant. 
and expectations will be that more cuts will hit its wider term of Australian journalists in the coming week, aiming to find savings of up to $65 million. And then what will they do after that? No answers. No idea. And that's all I'm going to talk about tonight. That's the show. Like there's, I mean, there's other things that could have brought up, but really, that's everything in a nutshell. That's a lot right there. And I'm just making my point. Tech AI, the future. And as for the news publishers, well, you're lying in a bed of antiquated, you know, you created this bed. You're lying in it. You're screwed. And you should have protected your business and your livelihood before the digital disruption decided to go ahead and completely destroy you. Because now you're towards your end. What are you going to do about that? Anyway, come back next week for another Broadcasters Podcast. Remember that content is king. These publishers should have learned that. And the control of your content is in your hands. 